Welcome to the Cross Border Interviews with Chris Brown. I'm your host, Chris Brown, and I'm here today with the head of advocacy for Keep Alberta Rolling Brooks Cretting. And he is going to be talking about the film industry, the television industry, but also what his nonprofit organization does for the film and television industry here in Alberta. Brock, thank you so much for doing this. It's an honor and pleasure. And before we get started, before you even jump in, I pronounced your name right this time, right? Because if I have to go back and do this a third time, I'm done. You nailed it. It was awesome. perfect. Spot on hosting skills. Well done. I'm so excited to be here. And thank you for having me. I'm, I'm excited to talk uh, about the film industry, but in particular, talk to you about it because I know you have an amazing podcast that goes all over Alberta and 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 Canada and, and, Canada and the world yeah. sometimes too. And the world. International. We're international now. Internationally and that's how I podcast. To talk to you. <laughs> um, so I'm excited we kind of got it. I, I, I am as well, Brock. And let's get let's get the first question out of the way. And usually I ask where someone's duty to serve comes from if they're a politician. But you're different. You're not a politician. You're not, uh, a head of advocacy for the uh, Keep Alberta Rolling. So it's going to be a different question for yourself. And that is, what does the film industry mean to you, Brock? Yeah, that's a big question to me. I mean, I, I mean, storytelling is a human need. And I think that uh, the film industry is a very approachable medium for uh, for people to get uh, wrapped up in a story, uh, to escape uh, for a moment in time in, from their daily lives and experience um, with empathy uh, other people's stories and adventures. And I think that that's something that uh, that does, like I said, fill a fill a human need. So so at very at a very high level, uh, that's what the film industry means to me. Uh, it also means uh, on the economic side and locally, it means a lot of jobs uh, and and positive economics. It means money coming into small businesses into our neighbors' uh, coffers and and our provincial coffers. Uh, so that side of it is is equally important, I think, um, especially. Uh, coming out of COVID, I, I mean, we're now. Uh, I know that's risky to say. I guess it's it's an ongoing, it's an ongoing and never-ending thing. Uh, but uh, coming out of the worst of COVID, uh, the need to you know support small business, support diversification in this in this province, and um, and to show off uh, the beautiful uh, landscapes that we have. Um. So the purpose of my show is to get to know people behind the, like the, the person behind the persona. And I, I want to start with the, the, this line of questioning here, and it's going to take you back to your first introduction to film, film or television. What got you into the film industry? Because bef before we know how we got to Keep Alberta Rolling, we need to know the man who created Keep Alberta Rolling or co-founded it with other people. So how, what was your introduction to the film industry or television industry? Yeah, so my first uh, first ever uh, introduction was an internship on a show called Klondike, uh, which was a Discovery Channel show uh, about the gold rush. Uh, we shot at Fortress Mountain. Uh, we shot all throughout southern Alberta. It was an ex extremely rainy year, so it was, uh, it was perfect for that show because it was just uh, a lot of people mucking about in the mud and uh, and getting uh, um, you know really in, invested in this story uh, it was an epic that had hundreds and hundreds of uh, background extras and very um, extensive uh, set decorations and obviously a period piece taking place in the late 1800s uh, so it really was a, a trial by fire uh, both in the production office and on set <laughs> of, of how does a huge uh, production get made um, and the potential that this uh, this province has for the screen industry. So that was my first uh, first introduction, and then I, I worked in uh, go ahead uh, uh, production offices and and as an assistant director uh, in the industry, and then uh, and then kind of got transitioned to the nonprofit and development space, which I'm in now. Now, what year was this when you first started off as an intern? Because it's going to tell a chronological story that we're going to try and tell here. And I just want to know what's the time frame in the, that internship? Yeah, so that was in, in 2013. So it started in January 2013. Um, and uh, and then, yeah, worked as uh, uh, in production offices for about four years. Um, 
on shows like uh, Fargo season one, uh, Wine Owner, uh, no, Wine Owner was later, uh, uh, Interstellar, uh, The Revenant, um, uh, a bunch of smaller shows in between Haunting Melissa 2 was one of them. Um, and uh, then I, I uh, that was about four years. And then I worked as an assistant director on uh, first three seasons of Wine Owner Herb, um, a show called The Teacher, um, a bunch of different shows in uh, in Alberta, and uh, and then yeah, I got into late 2018 is when we got together and said let's start a nonprofit and uh, and talk about how this industry uh, can grow and and uh, the opportunities for Albertans in it. Because one thing that I've always thought of when I think of the film and television industry, you don't traditionally think of Alberta, right? You think of Vancouver and Toronto because those are the hubs where most uh, television shows go and film and they're slowly getting to Alberta here. But in 2013, you made a conscious choice to stay here in Alberta to uh, make your career here. What was, what was the story behind that? Because was there a moment when you said the film industry is budding here and it's easier to get into an industry now than 20 years from now when it is so hot like it is in Vancouver and Toronto where it is massively hard to get into as a someone behind the camera, not as an, even as an actor? Yeah, I think like the, the, you know, it depends on how you look at it and how how difficult uh, it is to get in. Uh, it's it's uh, you know difficult on, in other ways to build an industry and try to try to attract it in a newer place. But um, I think throughout the uh, you know first five or six years here working on um, working in the industry and and meeting so many different people uh, that are crew members here, uh, we were talking about how can we better um, you know tell Alberta's story so that we are attracting some of these. Uh, productions and a lot of people have different reasons for staying in a smaller market uh, than saying going to a developed in, uh, industry like uh, uh, like in Vancouver, like you said, or a, uh, Toronto or or down south in um, like a Georgia or uh, or LA, but or New York. But the um, the critical pieces that those jurisdictions put together, someone had to put those in place, and so. Um, so those are not a, you know, not a secret or a mystery. Uh, it, you, it's just something they have to work to get people to understand so that, um, so that we could have what they have here, uh, what they have there here, and perhaps even better. Because what I see in Alberta is that we have natural assets that you can't um, you can't build. You can build a soundstage, but you can't build the Rocky Mountains. You can build, you know, you can uh, uh, you can uh, ship in equipment, uh, but you can't recreate uh, Drumheller or the Dinosaur National Park Badlands. Uh, so we have these natural um, assets that are under uh, shot and underutilized, um, and sitting there waiting to uh, have a story told in front of them. So it's such a beautiful natural asset that. Um, it, that I think hand in hand goes to the, the potential for cult, culture in this industry or in this province, and then also economics uh, going into the future. You, you said that first five years, uh, you were trying to tell that story, and that's where the nonprofit organization Keep Alberta Rolling came about. So in 2018, as you mentioned a little bit beforehand, you uh, were instrumental of starting this on uh, nonprofit organization, I'm assuming with a few other people, or was it by yourself? And the other question is, what is Keep Alberta Rolling all about? Awesome. Yeah, no, definitely. Not alone. Uh, the uh, the uh, two other people uh, that we started it uh, with as board members. Uh, one is his name is Vince Varga. He's still a board member. Uh, he was a publicist uh, for uh, IATSE 669, which is the the camera union for Western Canada. Um, and then Scott Lutley. Uh, he's he's a gaffer uh, in the LX department in in the industry. Um, so we had different skills. Uh, that all kind of and and a similar way of looking at things um, of what how, what's the best way to promote this industry locally um, and how do we get a bunch of people on side to support this? There's a lot of different uh, 
organizations, obviously, it's a very diverse industry. It's a very challenging industry to understand uh, if you're, uh, even if you're in it. <laughs> so, so if you're not in it, then, then it's, then it's uh, uh, of course, uh, hard to, to look behind, uh, you know, behind the curtain and, and beyond the screen and, and just the, you know, actors or the cameras or the, uh, you know, um, uh, screenings, the the premieres, the the glitz and the glamour of the marketing of the industry, to the uh, behind the scenes and what it actually takes to uh, make a project, and uh, and so the three of us uh, got together and uh, and started this. We got uh, support from uh, various uh, film industry organizations, uh, directors go to Canada. Uh, Calgary Economic Development, uh, IATSE 212, IATSE 669, uh, Teamsters 362, uh, ACTRA. Uh, Everyone. <laughs> we're, big on, we're big on, yeah, we're big on, uh, on uh, acronyms in the film industry. Uh, we love them. Uh, and, and basically that just means the, the organizations that uh, either promote or, or, or represent the people who work in the industry. Um, and and, you know, got to work on on telling this story, um, and then uh, kind of the decision makers who were trying to put forward policy positions. Uh, we were trying to take that conversation to the public and and make it easier to understand um, of why you know why should we grow the film and why should we care <laughs> why, why is this why is this something uh, that that any small business owner or or community or um, or average Albertan should uh, should spend any time thinking about or or care about um, and that goes to the benefits of. Uh, film production when it when it comes into your community so that can be um, the, all the behind the scene materials obviously uh, building sets uh, painting sets uh, the antiques or the the set dressing that can be furniture uh, the wardrobe all of those things are large purchases often multiple purchases of the same thing uh, used to create a you know create a craft story uh, build a world and that's a lot of money spent um on on things in in the province right um and then the other side of it is jobs right so all these behind the scene jobs that are like you said uh not the uh not the starring role and maybe not the director but the uh the jenny operator and the driver and the construction workers and the painters and the electricians um the people who take the furniture and 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 dress the set um all uh, all the organizers behind uh both set and the production office so there's there's accounting and an entire team that has to organize the logistics of of putting together these projects and that is a significant amount of people or like some of these projects uh it's a couple hundred like a you know a project like a, a heartland for example would be a crew of uh you know 100 to 200 people um and then large uh, scale projects are you know up to thousands of people you know a last of us uh can be you know downtown calgary uh making decrepit and and uh uh, uh apocalyptic scenes in entire city blocks in calgary as the same time as they're dressing somewhere in canmore and they have 75 people working in canmore because uh they're gonna they're gonna shoot tuesday and th thursday or tuesday wednesday in calgary and they're gonna shoot thursday friday in canmore and so they have um you know it scales how how big and how many uh, skills and people that are involved in these productions uh, so that's something that that uh, people should obviously support. I think it's important to support your neighbors with, uh, when uh, Alberta and Alberta is working. Then that's that's a good thing. That's a thumbs up for me. Uh, and 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 the other side of that is um, that that money from the materials goes into local businesses. So um, that's outside money uh, typically uh, that is coming from outside the province and and being spent in the province. So that's things that we really wanted to impart on uh, the general public. And that's a big part of uh, what Keep Alberta Rolling is and became. And and um, and then the other side of it is community and marketing. So we will do um, things like uh, taking individuals who work in the, uh, in the industry in different positions and do profiles on them and say, hey, 
meet uh, meet Jeff. He's the Jenny op. He's the guy who turns on the machine and makes sure that there's power running to set. And here's how that job works. So that's a, that's a benefit to people who maybe are electricians and maybe would be interested in that job. But it's also just a, uh, you know, here's how here's how it actually works. There's not the not the sales pitch of uh, what you think the film industry is, but it's a lot of work, um, and and it's just like any other industry that creates a lot of jobs. So um, that's a, a a long answer and a bunch. Of, I don't know if I could even call it a nutshell, but that's uh, that's some of the things we do. In, yeah, but in it, it, it's a good launching point for some of the questions that I have about the film industry and the television industry today, because your organization, as you said, is not just marketing to the uh, out outer province like the United States film industries, the Toronto film industries, the uh, Vancouver film industries, but it's also marketing to the people of Calgary, of Edmonton, of uh, smaller, small town Alberta, even all Alberta. What's the buy-in like? And I, I got to ask that question because it's always fun in games when you're like, oh, Last of Us, the HBO, I think that's how you, I think that's the name of it, the HBO show with pa Pablo Pascal was just filmed here in Alberta just recently. And the buy-in was, hey, there's a big celebrity coming in through town. Our town is getting it turned into an apocalyptic. But on the flip side, and I always played the devil's advocate here, is you hear the one or two people and you always you always hear those people on Twitter because, you know, Twitter is just a fun place to survive um, of, well, they've shut down this street. And now I have to walk to this. So how do you how do you market to a uh, diverse person? population when there's so much okay we love it but we also don't like it because you're making it more inconvenient for us does that make sense yeah, I think, <laughs> that makes total sense yeah yeah of course and and you nailed it the uh you know i'd say we don't uh, uh not that we couldn't but we don't typically market to out of markets so but we have you know film commissioners uh that will go to uh you know film festivals film markets um calgary economic development uh at, we have a film commissioner. There's a film commissioner in Edmonton um, that that kind of do that piece of it, and we're more of that local development, local understanding side. So exactly what you said, where um, there isn't a, a factor of inconvenience <laughs> to say, uh, you know, I I take my I usually go here for coffee, and now they're they're asking me to you know wait five minutes uh, uh, because they're shooting <laughs> because there's a zombie running down the street what's going on here why is this <laughs> this is not factored into my daily plan um, there's a, that's a that's a education piece I think that when people do understand um, the the amount of uh, money that's coming into the province because of these productions that uh, they're more supportive I think uh, that also ranges why they people would be supportive some people are more uh you know really big fans of uh of filmmaking or arts or creative sector and uh and they would be supportive of it for more cultural reasons and then others would be more like well it's a trade-off for uh the you know the economics of of you know take uh you know take that example of uh, you know, downtown traffic with The Last of Us, very big show, definitely had some hiccups with downtown traffic in, in Calgary. Um, that's, that, that is something that uh, you have to weigh against the uh, taxes that went into them paying for use of those roads. So that's not, uh, that is a, a tax burden that was taken off the taxpayer uh, to some extent. And, uh, and, injected into Calgary's coffers uh, for allowing that inconvenience for those periods of time. So, so yeah, there was a couple of days probably that people were like, I'm going to be five minutes late for this meeting, or I'm going to be 10 minutes late for this meeting. I'm not real happy about it. And, uh, um, or they had to take a detour or, or what have you. But, um, but then if the alternative is you have to pay you have to pay more taxes next year because uh we don't have we have vacancy downtown that's uh that's a trade-off that people have to uh, try to think about so i think that's that's part of, important part of the conversation is the economics uh benefit of it and then also the understanding that um uh, with these projects it's not just the initial cash spend but it's also uh this is a pain in my butt for a, a day or a week or two weeks and then when it comes out, you know, 50 million people are going to see Calgary on their screens. And then 
1% of those people come and visit, that's a secondary wave of wealth that can come into the province. So that's tourism um, and it opens up opportunities for people. So uh, definitely not a not an industry without, uh, without setbacks or trade-offs, but um, but definitely, uh, we try to, you know, tell the benefits and say, this is why it's worth uh, uh, that five minute delay. Now, I, I was not going to bring this up, but you, you talked about it a little bit there about the tourism aspect, the tourism act aspect of the film industry. Now, I, I, I can say I've gone to one film set and that was Dog River and that was Rolo, Saskatchewan, because it was like, OK, it's Canadian icon, you have to go. But is it true that people actually come to visit areas where films are filmed? Like, do you see, a, like, whether it be like even that 1%, a bump in tourism for certain, like the Ghostbusters Afterlife that was filmed here in Calgary, that was filmed down uh, south as well. I, I don't know the name of the town. It's escaping me right now. Fort McLeod, yeah. Fort McLeod. Do people actually come to the communities and say, I'm, I'm sitting where Paul Rudd sat or I'm sitting where Pablo Pascal sat because he was in Last of Us? Absolutely, you'd be really? you'd be absolutely you'd be shocked to hear yeah. what people do. <laughs> the uh, the uh, you know so take a take a Heartland. Uh, you know Heartland uh, is one of the top five most streamed shows in the world. Uh, so it's on uh, on Netflix. It's on many different things. Up family, um, obviously uh, you know a staple CBC show. Um, Two thousand people come to High River a year. Uh, because of that show, just one show, uh, they come to High River and they they take a picture with Maggie's Diner. Uh, you know that show is going to go on forever. So the uh, they stand outside it and they're still filming and they get a picture with the cast. Um, the uh, the museum there actually has a map on the wall of people with pins uh, from people from all over the world who have visited just because of of Heartland. Uh, so that is. Uh, uh, that is something it's actually it's got a term so uh when you when something has a term you know it happens a lot it's called uh, set, it's called set jetters uh so so people will uh yeah they'll you know because um some of these stories you know people um get so invested in the characters and the cast and and it becomes a you know a comforting thing depending on what's going on in their lives so uh so you know the meaning of some of these um, stories could be community. It could be their sense of of friendship. We take Ghostbusters. There is a that's a brand that you know has obviously been around since the 1980s, since the first movie. Um, but even though there was a large gap between uh, Ghostbusters two and the 2016 uh, show, the um, groups around the world and in different jurisdictions call themselves Ghostbusters. Uh, New Mexico, Ghostbusters, Alberta, the, the Ontario Ghostbusters, the uh, and and there is there's hundreds of these groups. So it's not it's not a small amount, and so it 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 actually is kind of this very you know niche to general public awareness thing, uh, but very lucrative um, opportunity that comes along with the film industry, and and some of them have that more than others right like a game of thrones an hbo show like a, a last of us it already has built-in fan base from the the video game um those have tremendous uh tourism potential and then others you know it's only if you're really a film buff <laughs> will, will you ever really care if some of these pro projects have shot in places but that doesn't mean that uh it's not cool to uh, locals or it's cool to people in the region that that something was filming so um so there's different levels of it for sure and on the highest levels it's uh it's a very effective form of uh, tourism marketing development for sure before we talk about the future and the economic uh, windfall that is the film industry, because we are seeing higher than uh, record uh, film productions and television productions filmed here in Alberta, I want to talk about the past for a little bit here for a second, and particularly the last two years with COVID-19. I know everyone does not want to talk about COVID-19, but uh, it is something that has affected a lot of people, and particularly the film and television industry was one of those uh, industries that was really affected how did the film industry and television industry uh, survive the last two years? And is it on a rebound? Yeah, I mean, it's, I'd say it's thriving now, but at the beginning of the, like going back to the pandemic, 
uh, everything shut down, right? So it was a complete, much like, you know, there's the, the film industry is in no way unique <laughs> to the world in the fact that everything shut down. Every, it was new to everybody. It hadn't happened in a hundred years. And so there, there was no like term of, of reference or, or uh, thing to compare what was happening um, in our living history uh, to, uh, you know, to what happened in, in 2020 there. Um, but um, what happened was everything shut down, everybody went home uh, because they had to, uh, you know, one be with their families, uh, not wanting to get caught in, can't cross the border, can't, you know, what are the, what are the rules here versus the rules somewhere else. Uh, and, and so it was very tough on, on everybody for a period of time because there was complete uncertainty in terms of it was like on one hand it was like you have the summer off and on the other on the other hand it was like well will will things ever happen again we don't know <laughs> so, so yeah it was uh, not a not exactly a, a happy time but uh what happened was uh uh, you know, at a higher level, uh, studios all got together, the unions all got together, all the various players in the in the film industry, and they really worked out very strict, very stringent rules on um, how a set could be like a bubble. And then uh, they do testing, they still do masking, this is all still ongoing. So like, the world may have somewhat moved on, but the film industry still much operates like, uh, like COVID is still at its height peak in some ways. So um, the reason for that is because if a cast member or a the director, top level crew member gets sick, you might have to rearrange in a schedule and that could cost hundreds of thousands of dollars, that could cost millions of dollars, that could bring down your whole show. So they take it extremely seriously. Um, and, and to their, you know, the larger they's credit, uh, um, all these all these organizations and companies got together and said, you know, here's the rules, uh, here's how we're going to make it so that this this industry comes back. And then once that was in place, the demand was off the charts because the demand was already very high, and then people had been given this unprecedented, uh, you know, four month or two month period at least two months, where they were just watching things at home or their kids were watching things at home it was more of a part of people's lives even even than it was before and a lot of these companies were just trying to start their streaming services uh, apple's a good ex example but uh you know amazon was ramping up how much they were making netflix was uh, exponentially growing how much original content they were making so this made that go oh like what if this happens again? What if we shut down again? We have to make twice as much as what we thought we we should make. So that just exploded, um, and so uh, this to the to the benefit of jurisdictions that um, that have a good tax credit, to have a labor force, other other factors that you need. Um, that's an opportunity. And for for example, in Alberta, they they would allow people to uh, test and then quarantine for three days instead of. Uh, 14. So that in in our unique and particular circumstance of the film industry, that really helps because or helped at the time because uh, that got people on set and scouting as as quickly as possible. Um, and then all the hotels were pretty much empty. So uh, we used <laughs> so we had our pick of the hotels with our uh, film productions at that time, uh, which uh, which helped. Uh, uh, bring we could bring cast in and, and different things but um but yeah since that time which when it started up was about fall uh fall 2020 and and also to uh, uh 724's credit uh who they started up uh, wine owner Earp the second half of the season which got shut down half halfway uh when the pandemic happened uh they were like the first canadian show that got uh got turning again and uh and um, got going so so that gave like kind of uh, rules for everybody to or an example of everyone to follow how to try to pull it off um, it, it's been gangbusters uh, going going off like crazy to uh, since since then so uh, so 2021 was a record year for uh, film production not just uh, compared to the COVID but ever like so it was 560 million dollars uh, in in production last year, uh, which compared to uh, the last comparable years were 
anywhere from 250 million to 300 million. So based over a double, over a double in how much production was taking place. I, I do remember a story because uh, we had uh, the actor Gary Chalk on the show a few uh, year ago in the midst of the uh, pandemic. And he said he had to sit in a hotel for three days because he had to quarantine because he was flying in. And before you got to the set, you had to quarantine yourself. And that's when we got the interview because he literally had nothing else to do. So he was able to come on. <laughs> but the, what and people in the film industry took it serious, right? They like you, you, like they were very like, because when you lose your job in the film industry, it's not like a next paycheck is coming to you unless you're working, right? Where when someone comes back and says, here are the rules, they're going, okay, we're going to do it and we're going to do it safely. So tell me what we have to do and we'll do it, right? Because you didn't hear many people complaining. You didn't hear like, unless you probably heard them on set, oh, I have to wear a mask or anything like that. But it seemed like the film industry really took it and the television industry really took it seriously because they knew that it was their livelihoods and you wanted to get back to work. Yeah, I think I think the thing. I mean, lots of people took that view of it's not it's not just their livelihoods; it's the livelihoods of of your entire community, <laughs> like your your uh, your entire crew, your your this production company. It's it it really demonstrated how connected, um, you know, all the way from a production assistant all the way up to an executive producer. Uh, someone brings COVID on that set, and 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 it shuts down like that hurts everybody so uh so i i, I wouldn't agree with that there was no complaining <laughs> and i would, <laughs> and i wouldn't agree that uh that uh, you know that this hasn't been extremely hard on people like because you gotta think like uh the uh you know you're lifting 50 pound lights up a hill and you have to wear a mask or you or you're um you're you're stuck in tight quarters and you have to uh wave a heavy flag of of wafting smoke into the into the uh the sets um and on top of that you have to wear protective gear and a mask and you're already like like you're already very tired and and you're and and you're working long hours so it it was not easy on anybody i don't think and uh, um and certainly not without uh uh warrant that it would be uh complained about but but the um yeah everybody's job was on the line from it every day so you gotta uh i guess everyone took one for the team and uh worked together but yeah. Which I'm glad to hear. I want to talk about the economic uh, factors here because Alberta is seeing a lot more productions looking and coming here. We are seeing TV shows. We're seeing Disney Plus shows. We're seeing T uh, Disney Plus movies, uh, Apple uh, movies, uh, TV shows, Fraggle Rock coming here. What do you chalk that up to? Is the word getting out that Alberta is open for business and they want to become a the next stop in uh, the film industry in Canada, because I've never seen more action in Alberta because maybe it's because there's organizations like you that are promoting it more now, but it seems like there's more organizations that are coming here to Alberta to do their filming because it is, like you said at the beginning of the interview, you have the the mountains in an hour drive, you have Drumheller, you have places like High River. So is it just the proximity or is it because it is actually a place where you can get all five uh, seasons within an hour drive from Calgary. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's all of the above, right? So the, I mean, the top, one of the top things is that we always had this, we had a cap on the tax credit. So that was, uh, that was a disincentive for any of these larger productions uh, to, to even consider Alberta. So if they, um, you know, they have lawyers and accountants and they put in a formula and they go, we have, we have uh, productions that could shoot in any of these, you know, 10 places around the world, let's say, uh, hypothetically, and uh, what would it cost? What is the, what are the incentives uh, offered in each one of those places? And so, so at, at a, are we competitive? You know, uh, are we competitive we in are, Alberta compared to like Vancouver and Toronto? We are now, yeah. So, so the uh, because of that, because of that lift, and because of, as long as the as long as the Canadian dollar is relatively low to the American dollar, um, we're not uh, we're not the cheapest uh, by any stretch of the imagination. But we are, uh, I think, the best best uh, best value for your dollar because because like you said, we have 
those landscape advantages that are just uh, such a varied uh, landscape in in close proximity to uh, certainly Calgary, but also Edmonton, um, and um, and then the uh, tax credit. Uh, we weren't competitive until 2021, really, or late 2020. Uh, the that 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 limit uh, basically, uh, we were competitive up to a up to a certain budget of uh, let's. Well, let's say it was about 45 million, but anything over 45 million, we were not competitive. So, uh, so now we're competitive because that that cap has been lifted uh, to Minister Doug Schweitzer's credit, um, and uh, and you know everybody had been uh, advocating for that to happen. Uh, but there's also a lot of great uh, things going on that. Um, it's not just the tax credit, it's it's the marketing, it's the uh, collaboration amongst uh, film industry organizations and trying to, um, you know, uh, now we've got a, a training uh, is our next, uh, you know, that's our next hill to climb, which is, uh, you know, how do we help promote uh, uh, the unions and these, these training uh, classes and opportunities with post-secondaries as well, but, uh, you know, different, different gaps in, in um, the number of people that are available at any one time. How do we make sure that uh, the most qualified people who are interested are finding out about this industry, are taking the, uh, you know, necessary courses to get on set um, and growing the industry that way. And I think, uh, uh, people are doing a really great job of um, of making that happen. That's just a a necessary challenge of of growth in any industry. Is how do you uh, now we need workers. We need we need people to to get in, involved and get excited because uh, well, and that's the, that's where I want to end the sort of the interview here and sort of a, a pitch here is how do we get more people involved in the film industry and the television industry? Because uh, it's not usually a job that a lot of people, like I, I went to film school, you went to film school, I'm assuming as well. It's not a job that you're going, hey, there's a lot of people who are like hammering down the door to try to get into, especially in my hometown where I went to uh, the film school. So it's not one of those yeah, programs that a lot of people were lined up the door to get into. How do we get more people into the industry? Because like you said, there are jobs there. I was on your website. They're calling for people to come in, out and uh, do these jobs. But how do we get people involved? How do we get people in high school to get interested in the film industry today if they're not? Yeah, I think outreach. I think uh, I think in building that pipeline from, uh, you know, high school uh, potential, either creative interest or or skilled trades. You know, it's a it's a different application of of skilled trades, and 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 that's uh, um, something that uh, people need to understand and that's something that we've you know worked on but can always continue and do better at is is say like you don't have to be Brad Pitt to be in the film industry like you can be you can be an amazing creative sculptor you can be a painter you can be a carpenter you can be a wardrobe person you can be a makeup person you can be a special effects person who blows things up you can be a driver you can be a drone uh, a drone flyer you can be um, an assistant director who organizes things there's all these different jobs so we have to make sure that that people are aware of that that we're supporting and encouraging um, educators, so maybe that's high school teachers that are, uh, you know, trying to get a film studies course going. How do we make sure we encourage that? Because those people are, are you know, potential future, um, um, you know, in, in, involved uh, leaders in the in the film industry. Um, Does Keep and, Alberta Rolling come into play here? Does Keep Alberta Rolling go yeah. into those high schools or work with those teachers if we, they reach out to you? We, I, we do, we do uh, one on one. We haven't done a good job of like maybe pro making that like programming um, or, uh, you know, developing it in a more, um, you know, here's here's all our post secondaries. Let's build a pipeline uh, for all these students that graduate every year uh, from uh, graduation day to you got your papers now let's get them uh, take one more course and you're uh, trying to get you on set or or uh, you know there's no um, available spots on set right now if you choose to go to 
uh, Vancouver, as some have, how do we get those people to, after they have a little bit of experience, come back to Alberta and then find their way in, in the industry uh, at home, so to speak, so that they're, they're um, uh, building the industry here rather than us training them and then, and then sending, them to, some, sending them somewhere else to benefit. Uh, how, how do we make sure that that happens? So that's, that's a big part of the ongoing conversation right now. Um, and I think that uh, uh, to uh, their great credit and, and uh, to our great gratitude, uh, communities uh, throughout Alberta have been jumping on board and supportive and more interested than ever uh, in, in growing this industry and promoting this industry um, in, in even locally so that people find out when uh, you know, when there's a casting call for zombies in Cardston, uh, people in Cardston actually hear about it, right? Like that they that it reaches their inbox or inbox or it reaches their Facebook page or whatever, what have you. Um, but uh, yeah, there's lots of always work to be done in that regard. Um, we just uh, yeah have been trying to get the word out on especially social media. Um, but uh, I'm excited for uh, in the future where this goes as as we grow the industry and over time, hopefully uh, in you know, maybe 10, 15 years, we can look back and be like, wow, we're bigger than Georgia. I don't know if that's possible. If we get gonna, an MCU movie right. here, we're good, we're good. Um, <laughs> but before, before we wrap up, I, I, you said something I wanna, I wanna just, uh, just get your opinion or your statement on here. Um, when you have a big show like Heartland or if you have a big show like The Last of Us, film in a community like Calgary, Edmonton, do you see an uptick of people wanting to get involved? Like, do you see a lot of people saying, hey, I, I was a rigger out in Vancouver. How can I get involved here? Because like something on a, like uh, having that on your resume, that seemed like something that a lot of people would go, well, they've worked on Heartland. They've worked on an HBO uh, show. Let's hire them because they know what they're doing here. Do you see a lot of industry people coming to Calgary when they get whiff of big shows like that coming uh, and filming into this province? Yeah, definitely. And people even, you know, as, as the momentum for this industry grows, even seeing people move back, you know, move from, uh, or, or even move from the, for the first time from Toronto or, or Vancouver, not because we're bigger here, but because there might be more opportunity for a uh, second assistant director to become a first assistant director or a, uh, you know, payroll accountant to be a head accountant in Alberta than there is in Vancouver, where the, the field is very crowded. Uh, here, there might be like gaps and, and opportunities to move up. Uh, so that's one thing. And then, yeah, when there's a big show in town, uh, like everyone loves, every, excuse me, everyone loves Heartland and everyone loves uh, a show like The Last of Us or Ghostbusters. Um, those are uh, attention grabbers. Uh, lots of times people just want to see maybe the star or something, but, um, but if you do have a hard skill, uh, yeah, reach out to, uh, you know, the unions, uh, uh, you know, IATSE 212, if you're kind of a technician uh, it, skill, if you're more of a, uh, either wanting an entry level, like production assistant or um, or more organizational management, um, locations, director, uh, production office, that type of thing, that's director's guild. Um, if you're a actor, uh, the, the name of the organization is ACTRA. So look up ACTRA Alberta. Um, if you want to be a driver, it's called Teamsters 362. Uh, so that's drivers, wranglers, and uh, caterers. Um, and then 669 is uh, technicians, but camera technicians. Uh, so that they have their own thing. So, um, so whichever uh, you know, area you might think you're interested in, one unique thing about the industry is uh, you can try something and then meet a bunch of people on set and then you can move into a totally different thing, which that's a, a pretty unique thing in, in, uh, you know, in an office setting, you can't, you, typically you can't go from HR to accounting, <laughs> but in the film industry, let me tell you. <laughs> you <can't>. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> here it's 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 very people based uh it's 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 a lot of you know building relationships and networking and then and then it's also skill based so you learn your skill uh both by uh taking these courses 
uh, those organizations I mentioned are doing more training than they've ever done. Uh, so there's typically, uh, you know, uh, I think it's anywhere from fifty to hundred dollars uh, set out a kit course that you can take. It's one. It's a one day course, and you can you can see if is this something I like or is this something I would hate. Uh, Either way, right? Uh, you can learn about and then um, and then take the next steps to trying to get on set in, in any of one of those uh, positions. So, uh, yeah, I think uh, that was a very long answer for for yes, there is a, there's an uptick <laughs> when when a big show is in town. There's an uptick in interest for sure. If he would have just said yes, I wouldn't have been happy because on a podcast you need people talking, and if you're only given one word answers, it doesn't help me. Brock, so thank you. There you go. But Brock, one last question for you, and this is more of a plug for you and Keep Alberta Rolling. How can people learn more about your organization? Because uh, there's probably questions that a lot of people have that we haven't answered in the last 45 minutes, but I, I want to give you the opportunity to give the people of the show, and uh, you don't need to like list off all. You can. We're going to have them in the show notes, but where can people find you? Yeah, Keep Alberta Rolling on all social platforms um and keep alberta rolling.ca and and i just want to say thank you so much for having me on your awesome podcast and i wish you nothing but the best i hope that uh, uh i i know that this will continue to take off and and uh and i hope that i've been watching your button collection get bigger and bigger <laughs> and bigger so i, I to the uh, detriment of my husband yes it's getting bigger bigger <laughs> and bigger <laughs> we, should, uh, we should have that on our website uh, 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 uh chris's button tracker i, I like <laughs> I like the Hey, things. if you have a Keep Alberta Rolling button, we'd love to add it to the uh, nonprofit organization section. Um, but Brock, thank you so much for doing this. It's been an honor and a pleasure to have you on the show to talk about your organization, but also talk about the film and television industry here in Alberta. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Chris. So with that, uh, to everyone who's listening, just a reminder, Keep Alberta's Rollings, uh, links to their show, social media pages and their website will be in the show notes. And get out from behind social media for at least five minutes a day and go have a conversation with somebody. It does make our life and our uh, society a lot better when we're not yelling into the void of Twitter. So with that, have yourself an excellent day. And remember, everyone, keep talking. Keep talking.